Hi, welcome to another video. This one's talking about microchips 12-bit DAC. Uh, I wonder if I can squeeze this in. Got it from Farnell, just a um, couple of pound. So see, as you can see, the MCP4821 12-bit DAC uh, with an internal voltage reference. So it's got its own internal voltage reference at 2.048 volts or something like that and using software you can double that up uh, to get an output swing from instead of 0 to 2 volts, uh, 0 to 4 volts. And obviously if you run the output into an op amp or something like that you get a bigger swing. All you need is a microcontroller with SPI and I'll show you how to wire it up and program it in a minute. So what I've done, per simple code, uh, which is also available at Microelectronica, they use a 12-bit DAC, but uh, their version has an external uh, voltage reference. But this one, the, the beauty of this one is cheaper. It's got its own internal voltage reference, as I said, and you can multiply the gain by two. On Microelectronica's one, you can't. You need an extra chip for a 4096 voltage reference. Anyway, so what I've done, let me show you. Got it on the board. Just set two switches up down here, RA3 and RA4, to increase and decrease the output. So that's obviously giving me a digital signal from 4096 or 4095 down to zero and back up again, depending on what button you press. And you get an output voltage on the DAC. So if I turn, I'll turn the chip off first, turn my board off, turn it back on, and I'll pre-program the value at halfway. As you can see, it's come up at 2.02 volts. So what I'll do, just press one of these buttons. But I've got this scope on five seconds of division, so it's slow. Well, that's me pressing the button down, and back up again so you see it's up to 402 volts back down again so what you've got is a programmable voltage source and depending on what you drive as I say op amps or whatever you can have pro programmable voltage source programmable current source uh, a microchip give you examples of um, uh, comparators circuits that sort of stuff so that's all the way back down again. You might even be able to hear the ice cream man outside. It's a nice day today. Wait for this scope to loop round. There we go, so that's holding the button down. And hold the button for up. Or you can just come down a couple of bits if you want. And as I say, if you put a keyboard on it, you can program whatever number you like. And so that's it, a programmable voltage source. So that's um, fairly straightforward. As I say, I was pressing the buttons down there, RA3 and RA4, I'll show you the code. If I just go back to the chip for a minute. So all we've got is chip select, which you can select any pin on your microcontroller, just call it chip select. We've got power, ground, and serial data in, which is the serial data out on the microcontroller, also known as this mozzie, it says master out serial in. Uh, got to be careful on what microcontroller you use. Some microcontrollers don't have the old Motorola stroke free scale SPI method, so but I'll show you on the screen show you what to look for. So um, chip select, clock, and serial data out of the microcontroller. I've got mine wired down there to clock and serial data out. In fact, what I'll do before I show you the screen, I'll show you the clock. Right, so that's the clock pin. So if I just zoom in, and you see these are the 8 bits of data being sent. 8 bits, then the pause, then the second lot of 8 bits. 
so we've actually got 12 bits of data being sent plus data for telling the DAC what mode we're operating and whether it's gain times one or times two, that sort of stuff, and whether it's shut down or, or not. You can shut this down, shut the DAC down with software or externally grounding a pin, uh, that sort of stuff. Right, hopefully you can see all this. Uh, select high definition if you're not on it already. So this is the chip select pin. So I've chosen on this board, I'm using uh, port C pin two. So that's the chip select. And I've got a, a variable, a temperature uh, and an unsigned int for the value of the ADC. Then this is initializing the chip. So on this particular chip, I've got trees A, pin three and four, uh, pin three and four port A as the input switches for up and down. Chip select, we're saying is one, so you're dis disabling the chip select at startup and chip select direction, so we're saying that's an output. Uh, Initialising the SPI, in this case it's SPI one. And then this is the actual control. So if you look, uh, so it's a DAC output. And so this function here is actually writing to the DAC. So what we're doing, taking the first eight bits of data, shifting down eight places and sending that out. This bit here, this temp, uh, one of this particular DAC I'm using, look at the data sheet, I found Putting a one zero uh, doubles the gain, gives us the 4096 internal voltage reference instead of the 2048. But depending on what DAC you're using, this might vary. So this is writing the first high eight bits of data and then the second low bits of data. And you saw on the, on the clock, there was like eight and eight. So, and then once that's written, deselecting the chip. So this is the main program, and that's all there is. So AD1 PCFG, that's for this PIC32, but just uh, all ports digital, initializing the main, which was that loop program you saw up the top, just there. This is the value I'm setting, so you saw when I switched it on 2048, so that's half of 4095, 4096, depending on which way you look at it. So that gives me the two volts to switch on. And then this is a wire loop, depending if the switch is pressed. If I 3 bit and the value is less than 4095, it increases the value. Else, if I 4 bit uh, is pressed and the value is greater than zero, it decreases the value. As I say, Microelectronica have got sample programs on their site. It's for a slightly different DAC, but I found this one easier to use. As I said, it's got its own internal voltage reference uh, and then that's the DAC output so it looks at the switches and then gives the output to the DAC and then the delay 500 milliseconds or, uh, sorry 500 microseconds half a millisecond what I did actually do had a, a four loop in here so with this, these bits are removed at the moment, but you can see value is naught, value is less than 4095, value plus plus. If you remove these lines, that just continually counts from naught to 4095 and back down again and gives you a, effectively a ramp. That's what that was doing. And, and that's it. So I'll show you the drawing. Uh, this was looking at one of the microcontrollers. Uh, this is actually the 46K22, and you'll see, depending on what microcontroller you've got, this is the 46K22 has actually got its internal DAC. So look at the, what chip you use. Might already have it. So close that down. Right, this is the wiring. Hopefully you can see all that. So depending on what microcontroller you've got, 
these can actually work up 5.5 is actually higher but they say working voltage 5.5 so that's power chip select as you saw on the code there you can define any pin as a chip select this is the serial clock and serial data in uh, and in this particular mode it's, I think it's known as the Motorola type serial data I think Motorola and Stroke Free, Freescale will call it sim, uh, simple synchronous uh, in out uh, so this is SDO so serial data out uh, channel 1 and serial clock channel 1 so that's what those are LDAC, so that's latch this one's wired to ground in this example but you can wire it to the microcontroller and it will latch the data and only send it when you're ready that sort of stuff but it does wire it to ground this is your shutdown so if you ground this pin it shuts down the DAC so you can wire that again to the microcontroller but I've tied it high to 4 volts in this case 4 or 5 volts uh, VSS this is ground and voltage out there. Uh, so you've got programmable voltage source. So if I move you over, you can run that into a precision op amp or transistor or whatever, get bigger swings and do something else. Right, as I say, depending on what microcontroller you've got, so I picked just a uh, as an example, so 16F677. Don't necessarily need 32 bit PIP microcontroller. This has got SPI, and we are looking for. Right, SPI, so we got this SSP here. So this is the serial data in and serial data. These two will be full of I2C or, S, uh, or the, the other type of SPI. So serial data in, serial data, serial clock and serial clock line, and then for this mode, for this particular DAC, we need this SDO, so serial data out, which I believe is slightly uh, more compatible with the Motorola of Freescale semiconductors. So this serial data out, that's what you're looking for on your microcontroller. This has only got one channel, so just serial data out, and serial clock. Right, so just before I go, I've removed those slashes, uh, put this loop back in so you see it's just counting 0 to 4095 and back again. That's all it's doing. Uh, as I say, when I've turned the microcontroller on, that was the preset value, but now so it's not looking at the switches, it's just doing this loop. So if I put you back on the scope, you'll see what it's doing. Well, so here we are back on the scope and you see it's just counting 0 to 4095 and back again. This is obviously running quickly at the moment so you just see the DC level rising. But if I slow this scope down... I've actually looked at this signal earlier as well, put it on the AC and there's very little noise on the output. A few millivolts of that. Oh, that's of course with this my fluorescent light turned off. There we go, so that's it ramping up, drops down to nothing, ramps up again. So it's obviously going to stay there now. You can just see it scanning through. So that's that. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you very much.